James Norton. Hi, James. Always great to see you. So, if you were marking his last seven days out of ten, how do you think he's done? It's, uh, it's, it's a difference between the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think the good being passing the tax plan was a pretty big political achievement for, for President Trump at this point. James Norton. Hi, James. Always great to see you. So, if you were marking his last seven days out of ten, how do you think he's done? It's, uh, it's, it's a difference between the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think the good being passing the tax plan was a pretty big political achievement for, for President Trump at this point. Uh, you know, he struggled with his legislative agenda on health care and other issues, but it seemed like Republicans were willing to unite behind him on taxes and lowering the corporate tax rate from about 35 percent to 20 percent. So that was a fairly significant achievement. And then the other one just coming last night being the Supreme Court upholding his travel ban uh, for six uh, six countries that he targeted early on in his administration. So, you know, I think from that perspective, he has had some some fairly big political victories and things that he has talked about since the campaign. So fairly important for him, uh, you know, at this point in terms of getting some wins. What about the bad? So the bad, certainly, uh, you know, the news on Michael Flynn, um, you know, coming out Friday was, uh, again, another political blow for the administration. I think it, you know, again, pushes it back in terms of its footing. Um, you know, I think when the Russian investigation started, people kind of had, you know, kind of were giving the best president. I think at this point, you know, with, um, uh, you know, the, the recent indictments, uh, now there's two guilty pleas, and then the, you know, investigation seems to be gaining a lot of steam. So this is very problematic for the administration and the president going into January uh, and, and February of next year. And because, as you just said in the, in the program, you know, now we're looking at bank statements and, you know, they always say follow the money here in Washington, you know, following Watergate. And I think that's, you know, potentially where the uh, special prosecutor is going. So that's, that's definitely a problem for the president. Yeah, we know what happened with Watergate, don't we, and the uh, finality <laughs> of, of that, do we not? Um, he did not want to hand over his bank details. Um, he's had no choice. There will be a lot of people are collectively holding their breath at this stage. You know, I think so. I think that, you know, he obviously hasn't released his tax returns at this point, which was something that, you know, Democrats and Republicans were calling for during the campaign. You know, there was a 2005 return that somehow leaked out. I'm not sure how it got there, but that's always been a, a sensitive subject, it seems, for President Trump, his tax returns and finances. And, you know, I think there are obviously a lot of international ties to his corporations and businesses that he's either chaired or sold licenses to. So, you know, there obviously are going to be some connections there internationally, but I think how it flows back to some of the relationships that were developed or uh, further developed during the campaign, I think it's obviously something they're probably uh, looking at and trying to understand, uh, you know, a little bit better. Okay. Let's go full Clint Eastwood. Should we? We've done the good and the bad. What about the ugly? <laughs> the ugly, absolutely. Well, you know, just yesterday, uh, President Trump from Air Force One flying out to Utah, you know, called Senate candidate Roy Moore uh, from Alabama. And he's obviously a fairly controversial candidate. Uh, several women have come out saying that he uh, was a predator towards them, you know, and have had some fairly strong uh, stories related to this. A lot of a lot of people are, you know, have called for Roy Moore to drop out of the race and pull himself out and, you know, including Mitt Romney and, and several other prominent Republicans. For some reason, President Trump decided to endorse uh, Roy Moore from, from Air Force One and wish him luck in a primary that's coming up in two weeks. So that's, that's going to put the Republican Party, or it continues to put the Republican Party in a really good spot, uh, given the fact that if he does win this election, you know, what is Mitch McConnell going to do as the Senate Majority Leader in terms of allowing him to become you know, a Republican uh, senator that you know, is coming with quite a bit of baggage that's going to have to be investigated? Um, this this is uh, something that's a big concern for many Republicans, and really can't understand, you know, why he would do something like that, especially, you know, after uh, kind of pulling support from the RNC, and now it seems like the RNC, Republican National Committee, is is now endorsing him again. So a lot of confusion, a lot of ugliness um, there, and I think that's, you know, just just when it seems like President Trump has a couple of victories, he seems to be, you know, throwing some some flags on the play and saying that you know, uh, causing, causing more strife within the Republican Party, which is really putting the Republican Party in a civil war, um, you know, amongst itself. And so we'll see how this, how this plays out. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you about that, James, if I may. We're about five or six weeks away, aren't we, from the uh, first anniversary of uh, President Trump uh, taking office. Uh, on balance, how do you think that the, uh, the GOP is seeing him? You know, I think, uh, as we talked about last week, I think it's, He's almost a Wizard of Oz, you know, where he's kind of the man behind the curtain and 
the GOP establishment, especially in, in the U.S. or in the Congress, is almost not paying attention to them, and they're trying to get things done. And so I think from the standpoint of, you know, appointments of judges, appointments of, you know, people like Justice Gorsuch in the Supreme Court, there's satisfaction that President Trump did win, and they were able to accomplish that. But then at the same time, it's thrown the Republican Party into almost complete disarray since the time that he was nominated, um, you know, last July. And so I think... I, I, I'm not sure people really know what, what's next, and I think that's part of the problem with the current administration is there really is not a long-term strategy past a couple of weeks rather than looking two or four years ahead. And so I think that's going to be the real challenge uh, for not only Republicans, for the administration, uh, for the country is kind of where we go um, you know, beyond 2018 and, and yeah. if there is what the future looks like. Because a lot of people think the Democrat wave is coming and Democrats are going to be big winners here um, next November, and that could really put this administration in a tough spot because that'll trigger probably a lot of investigations on Capitol Hill, even more so than you're seeing now. And when so, we're talking about next November, to, sorry James, but just to clarify for people here in the United yeah. Kingdom, when we're talking about next November, we're talking about the midterms, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah, the midterm elections coming in, uh, coming in November. So the entire U.S. House of Representatives is up for election, and then one-third of the U.S. Senate is up for election, and so that could absolutely tip the balance of power here uh, in Washington and turn it over to the Democrats. Okay.